Alright, hello everyone. I had gotten used to the music and I don't know about you, but there was something kind of comforting about it. I see so many people, wow. I made the mistake of looking at the number of participants, but I, it seems to be exploding. So, hello all. I'll allow myself to wait one more minute before starting. It will allow me to welcome you a little more appropriately and to prepare. There we go. There we go. So, I'll share my presentation right away. I would like to highlight that I didn't want, it was my intention for Vanessa to be so much smaller than I am. That was just the template we were given. I felt bad about taking up so much space. Well, I'm playing a supporting role. Well, we'll talk about support, technical support, emotional support, all you want. So I see there are people who are brave enough to join us if on a Friday afternoon, and I can promise you one thing, I'll try to be, avoid being boring as much as possible and make sure your afternoon was worth it. So there we are. To respect everyone, I will wait a minute more, but I will start now. So I'm happy to share and to get to know your lazy person tricks. You know, I'm someone who starts a lot of projects, who likes when things are moving, who likes when things are moving fast. And for things to move fast, I need to be lazy. We'll see why. As you can see, and Vanessa will send this in the chat, there's a participants kit where you can find complimentary information. You will also find the presentation. And I should highlight that the participants kit is bilingual. So you can, if you have two screens, it's perfect. You can follow two things at once and have access to different modules. So I will let Vanessa start with the first presentation. I don't know if you can hear me better. Seems my microphone was malfunctioning earlier. My name is Vanessa Boilly. I am a pedagogical counselor for the First Nations and Inuit. I've been working with Julie Bourset for about a year. We do a lot of things together and we're passionate about creation. So I think it'll be a very nice day today. And I can't wait to see how can we make this more dynamic and interesting. I know we'll be. Julie is excellent. Oh, you're so nice, Vanessa. And Vanessa will do great work as a moderator. Don't hesitate in the chat to keep her on her toes. But she's someone who's well organized, so I'm not worried about it for her in the slightest. Vanessa, with whom I almost didn't work, my name is Julie Boursier. When I was hired at first as a, an education counselor, it, I was Vanessa's replacement at Carrefour FGA. When she came back, I got had the opportunity to get to know the wonderful Racy team and to work with indigenous, with First Nations and Inuit communities, which was incredible. I won't, you know, if I start talking about it, I'll take up my entire hour, but I find it fascinating the extent to which indigenous pedagogy ensures that new programs, that the pedagogical renewal is working for real. And I advise you to pay some attention to it and take an interest to see what I'm talking about. So I will do my presentation. We'll go through it quickly. 
We explained it many times. There are badges which you can find in the participants toolkit and you'll have the link directly. I think Vanessa will link one more time in the chat. You've probably started accumulating your badges, most likely. It can count towards your training hours, your professional development hours. So you have the link towards our badge, but also here are the instructions to have access to the RECI campus. The presentations menu, we will start with pedagogical dystopia. The vocabulary can be intimidating. Dystopia it seems kind of extreme, unless you've studied, as I've had, literary creation. Dystopia is trying to project ourselves in an indeterminate universe to see reality in another way. So we'll start with pedagogical dystopia. Then we'll move towards the digital competency framework because with what we had this morning, I don't think be able to renew what was said or to do it as well as it was done. I think the opening was excellent and it was highly appreciated by participants. Well, so we'll go through it quickly. And then I asked myself how to separate my lazy person strategies, how to present them. But it's really, I'll just present some basics, but it helps me organize myself. I have strategies, recycling strategies, how to recycle the same material, collaboration. Sometimes I delegate to someone else. I send someone else ideas and hey, why not do something with this? And also, what I would call it getting it wrong with a smile. Sometimes you have to try or you don't move forward and you don't accomplish anything. So here we are. Is everything going well, Vanessa, on your end? All right, we continue. I said, we're starting out. Participants kit, if you want to link one more time, always the same thing. You can get these resources. And Vanessa is supposed to link to different activities or different strategies in the chat. But if I've lost one of them along the way, you'll, you'll be able to find it in the participants kit. Now the pedagogical dystopia. So you'll see my transitions are kind of deficient. I didn't have time to practice in person, but it applies to the last point, getting it wrong with a smile. So to summarize, Pedagog dystopia, and Vanessa will send you the link for the Woo Club. Dystopia will bring you to a place that we almost live through because of COVID. And I want to remind you all that there is an Anglophone version. From now on, you must teach exclusively with e-learning. Are some already shivering? You think about your students, the strongest and the weakest, and about your e-learning, e-teaching skills. That's where you start crying compulsively for many hours, asking yourself where to start, or take the time to practice a little bit and to ask a colleague who is familiar with these activities. You don't feel up to it, but you know you'll find solution eventually. Find in your, or finding your emails and your bookmarks, all the material you have collected over the last few years. You may not be completely ready, but you understand how it works, generally speaking, and you can do just fine. You know, there can be pitfalls, but more or less you're navigating the ship, you're comfortable, you know what will happen. It, or you take the time to drink a coffee or a tea with a clear head, you feel totally ready. And for what you still have to create, you know you can count on your network. I know among you, some people are saying, yeah, it doesn't apply to me. If I have to create everything for 
you're learning up and talk about it. And, or if you look at classified ads, you will return to your old passion, ice sculpture. So I ask you to click on the answer, which is most appropriate for you. I will end my screen sharing and take a look at the percentages. I know I can see the movement. I can't wait to show you the results, but we'll keep the suspense for now. And I have to say that this prompt, that's not the first time I've used it. When I say I like to recycle, I mean it. So I'll give you a few more moments. All right, we have a few ice sculpture aficionados, it seems at least one. There is a demand for ice sculpture, I have to say, especially with the holidays on the way. It shouldn't be too bad. So we have some 100 people who have answered so far. We're 296. I'll wait just a little bit. And here we are. And I will, okay, I'll, I'll surprise you. I like when I don't know what exactly will happen. It's so stimulating. I'll just wait 30 more seconds. Someone says the link is not clickable. Uh, just wait a second, now it should work. Just click on the most recent link in the chat or in the link in the participants guide. All right. It's almost a race. We're, let's go ahead. So, we you know it's not too bad. Thank you for asking you the question at the beginning of the pandemic. The answers would have been a little bit different. There might have been a little few more uh, sculptures. And, but now you've built up your skills, especially with today's presentations. You've built up your toolkit some more. All right, I can't hold it in anymore. I have to share my screen. And here we are. So, an idea, when you want to share your screen without all your tabs being visible, F11, it should work. And here we are. But you need to keep in mind to click, press F11 again to get out of there. That's how I found the, the uh, trick. There are many moves like that that I learned because I did something wrong initially. Well, as you can see, there aren't too many people who are crying or who are doing ice sculpture. There are some people who have the habit of conserving material from past years because they know they don't always have the resources to do what they want to do when they want to do. But when we accumulate things, when we hoard, it's often easier. And we see there's some people, 19%, who know who to talk to. And that's always a good idea because the person you go visit, you go talk to, it connects with many of the things we're going to talk about. You can collaborate, you can recycle, you can delegate. So going to talk to your colleagues is always a winning strategy. Where there are more answer coming in. So I will, but we don't have unlimited time, so I'll stop here. What I can tell you is that the final answers will be in the participants toolkit. I'll refer to the participants kit very often. 
It's always in development, this kit, and it's something I advise you to conserve because it'll be regularly updated and improved. So here we are for pedagogical dystopia. We can see that you don't feel completely at a loss if you are stuck with e-learning indefinitely. Uh, the reference framework for digital competence digital competency framework. We talked about it quite a bit today. And we were asked as moderators or as presenters to look at what competencies each of our interventions corresponded with. I would say that when we talk about creation or organization, how to save time to have time elsewhere, we end up playing with everything. So I was almost working on a puzzle and I finally decided that my workshop is wonderful because it touches on every single one of these points of these digital competency framework. You'll find in the participants kit, not only the links, the best practices, what these things mean, in relation to the competency framework, but also something that was developed by Caroline, her last name ex escapes me, from the English Montreal School Board, who created English and French versions of the digital competency framework. And the great thing is that when you clip on it, you have the summary of each of the competencies. And there is even more meat on the bones so I encourage you to check this out because it can give you ideas for working with your students. As you can see, I still haven't gotten rid of my Halloween costume. Organizing. If there's something you can do pretty easy digitally is organizing yourselves. But you need to do it. You need to look for strategies and go about it pretty rigorously before going into this. I should say that at every moment, I'm not looking at the chat at the same time. I'm relying on you rather. If Vanessa, uh, she sent a link to fill out a little survey we ask your strategies, what do, what are they connected to and what are your strategies? If you want to fill it out, it's totally anonymous. And at the beginning I was telling myself, oh, I create a collaborative document, it'll be in the chat. And then I realized I was in a room that can accommodate up to a thousand people. So I'm like, no, collaborative document won't work. So with these forms, which are neither connected to Google nor to Microsoft. There's no connection difficulties. It'll be a very quick process. And I commit to placing all these strategies in the participants kit. So maybe not over the next 24 hours. It's my son's birthday tomorrow. So please give me a little time. So give me a week. Right now there's a vortex of strategies. So give me until the end of November and all your strategies will be included in the participants kit. So if I go back to my first group of organized strategies, it's important first to write down all, all, all your ideas in a notebook, a digital notebook, paper, whatever. You know, you should be afraid of losing your notes. You can take pictures of them and then organize them on your computer. Open a Google Docs, a Word document, OneNote, 
There's so many apps that can help you out, but keep a paper trail somewhere. I will give an example of Milanote, which helps you using, helps you organize your ideas, which I used for the participants kit, but which includes an app on your phone, which is great because you can just use voice recognition to write these notes very quickly and place your notes exactly where you need them within Milanote. Why is this important? Because every time you tell yourself, certainly I'll recall this idea, you can be sure and certain that you'll forget. That's exactly the same principle as when you put something away in somewhere you can't forget. When you take notes, you have a trace. And then you can start going back and thinking and searching your memory. Next is take your project in small bites. It's not because you have 40 hours for a project that it's not possible to create. Let's say the project is a learning situation. What is a learning situation? Complex tax allowing the student to develop their skills. So it's, it's pretty straightforward when you look at it like that. Their academic, disciplinary, and transversal skills. You got a question. People don't know, didn't know about Milanote and want to know if it's like Evernote. No, it's not exactly like Evernote. I'll just show you right away. Just one second. I'll go over here. So it's, you can create these kinds of boards these writing paths. So when I look at doing less, creating more, you have all these writing paths. It works simultaneously in French and English. So I don't necessarily have perfect French. That's um, an aspect of my persona. My, the anglicism is drag and drop. So drag and drop, just going to look for something and placing it anywhere on the board. I don't need this, I'll drag and drop towards the recycling. And I think it's very good because you can use this for the free version or for the paid version. With the free version, you have a lot of tools at your disposal already. But what is interesting with this, and that's why I eventually got the paid version, is that let's say you create a new board. You can choose a template. And you really have all sorts of templates. You have templates for students. So if you want to create a weekly plan for your student, you just have to do that. You create the temp use the templating question. You can write very easily. And there's a possibility because it's collaborative. That's what I shared and then make it. There are ways of customizing and the student can check what they have to do during the week. Example. But it can be much more complex than that. It can be usable by, let's say, for the French teacher, for narrative sequences, for the math teachers. If you have different tasks, different exercises, you can drag and drop them there or add them to the list. But it allows you to organize your ideas and to duplicate. So it's very easy and intuitive organization. And I'll tell you, I'll do my coming out today. Whatever 
policies, the controversies. For me, Google Suite, I like it for a lot of things, but especially for Chrome. Chrome saves my life over and over again. I was talking about it earlier with organization. The organization, the applications with Chrome stores are very powerful. And there's one from Milanote, which allows me to explicitly, let's say if I have WooClap, I can click on Milanote and I have this link. It'll ask me where I want to insert it within WooClap. So when you have readings or you want to organize certain things, you're doing research for students, you see all these websites and you have to put them in your favorites. Well, this is even faster and more intuitive and it's more flexible also because you can share it with the student more easily. So it's really good. And once it's there, it doesn't go directly in your board. It goes in a little antechamber right next to it that you can visit according to your needs. So that's this year's discovery for me, Milano. It's wonderful. If I go back, if I go back, let me see, it'll make it clickable when we get out of there. Clicking can get a little complicated. So small bytes, Mila note is one way to break your project up. It's also a way of saying when you have an idea, instead of saying, oh, I don't have the time for that, just take the time very, very quickly to think, how can I break that idea up? If we go back to learning situations, one way is to decide to do complex tasks, which aren't necessarily all done together, but which could be done as a sequence if there is time. So that can really be a winning way to organize putting interesting digital tools in your favorites, bookmark interesting digital tools. When you find something, you say, oh, that could be so interesting for whatever purpose. You tell yourself, oh, I'll remember taking notes is always a better idea and use your email and your calendar to their full potential. What does that mean? Often, how could I put this? We think the inbox is only, how should I put this? It's only for receiving other people's emails. However, there's a possibility of sending yourself emails and sending them. Let's give an example for the digital day. I know I knew it would be now as far back as September. And I sent myself an email that would arrive only in October to remind myself. So you can send yourself timed emails. You can repeat emails to remind yourself of something. And you can tell yourself, not forgetting things. How does that help me create? Well, it's because it saves you time. And that's kind of the idea. Having time to create is really, we all know, we've all seen this. We all know people who seem to be just vacuuming up, vacuuming up money and or ideas and it's because they have their hands a little bit everywhere and they diversify someone was saying in the comments in the chrome reading list oh yes isn't that great you are totally right i discovered this also we already have one that is prepared and we just had to put it there so if i go back to chrome What is interesting there is that there's a possibility also of adding our favorite pages directly within Chrome. 
And I tell you, at the outset, what we tend to tell ourselves is, you know, these are all things I've added. There's too much clutter. And I agree with that. But I discovered something incredible. When you right click, you can edit and edit. You can edit the name of the bookmark. You can edit the URL. Not only can you edit, but you can completely suppress it. Else, no, because it's my trick for synonyms. I know it's been there for years, so I won't forget that bookmark. But when we have logos or fav icons, I learned recently the word fav icon. So these fav icons, the logos associated with different sites in the search bar or the bookmarks that we see in the tabs here, when they're important, we don't need to see the five icons anymore. When they f where you know the five icon, we don't need to know the name anymore. So you can just remove it. So these are just a few organization ideas. Oh, I just had an idea. I know you're not reading the conversation, but there were people saying Wakelet and we Google Keep and also tab groups. And yes, these are all good ideas. And I enjoin you to fill out the little form because that was my fear in the chat is to miss some things. And ideally, I would have wanted it to be a big, long discussion. I don't want to be the person saying, speaking really quickly and saying as much as possible. But we'll have a moment in February to do so. So I hope you'll be there again. But take the time to fill out the form. As I was saying, there's BG Bunch, but you can see it in the Notorious Participants Kit. If you click on Digi Bunch, it gives you some possibilities for creating your own balloon cluster. If you want more information, if you click there, you will really have all sorts of tools created by the digital team. These are in French, created by and for teachers. And I would say that they have extraordinary customer service and it's all completely free. So I'll let you discover this yourselves. So I'll give you some time to write your strategies and stop the screen sharing momentarily. And yeah, tab groupings. It's really good when you're teaching in particular. You can create these tab clusters and then send them to different groups. So all this question, oh, I don't want to turn off my computer, but I know the battery is dying in a minute. That factor can disappear because you know you'll be able to retrieve these clusters. So that's one very good feature. And I'm glad people are contributing their own strategies. So I'll continue with recycling. As we see here, recycling is important. Because we don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. It's not because someone had this idea beforehand that it's not good or that we have to contribute our own idea. There's so many things on YouTube, so many tutorials you can take advantages. Not all these tutorials are good. You have to listen to them beforehand. But there's a possibility of finding what's best and that from what's already been created. 
Okay, subscription to newsletters and also to look up the pages of the social networks. I work a lot with Nelly. I'll give you a link for that. Why didn't I put this up in the beginning? It's not because I didn't have enough time. I didn't post them beforehand, so I, oh, you would have to come and see my presentation, and then I would give you all of this information, because what you would have done, you would have taken the toolkit, and we have never would have heard from you anymore. So there you go. We have newsletters. We have social networks. I'm an adept of Chulnelli. The Facebook page is extraordinary, but the only thing is that at every moment I just want to work with Machenelli and just give up everything else because he gives out so many good ideas, but that can be something very interesting. So what we already have, we can reuse it to many different savers, many different uh, flavors. And that is exactly what brought me to this workshop. On Ginya Lee, I had created something for my son for the simple present, because he has difficulty with simple present time. So then uh, he had different he had different uh, difficulties with pronouns so i did the same thing exactly the same thing on the subject of pronouns so what i mean here is that i could do this with basically any subject but use the same interface so it comes down to saying that we often forget that we could reuse tools that we have used before So we recycle, we subscribe, we reuse. So think CUA. CUA is the Universal Conception of Learning, UCL in English. Why? Because sometimes we panic. We tell ourselves, oh, I don't have this particular exercise for this student. I don't have the situation to uh, help him learn. But in, action, in fact, we have it. For example, someone that has uh, issues with dys dyslexia, we can't give that to someone or a student that doesn't have any dyslexia. And then you feel, why? Why? Because there was a video that was done actually by uh, Richard Coulombe and Catherine Saint-André. I think that was it, right, Saint-André? I'm not rebaptizing re her. So we were speaking of a student where we could see one of the students had all kinds of boxes. He wanted to open the door with the with the knob for people with uh, physical impairment. And the other person next to him was saying, well, you can't, you can't, you're not in physically impaired. But he was walking there with his boxes in his hands. But, you know, it doesn't limit uh, this tool is not limited to only people that with um, impairments. So we need to share the tools, all of the tools with all students. Also, UCL also is about the fact that maybe we don't have a document based on what we want the student to do. Maybe we just have a good idea. Maybe we, this time we could ask the student to record himself with his cell phone. It's not going to take away anything. He's still going to learn. So basically, it's try to look things, look at things differently. Think outside of the box. Suggest new ways of doing things. Also, there is video ask, which is very interesting. Here, you can ask a question while being filmed as a teacher. And then you have the possibility to ask the student to answer us in the through the means of his own choice, either in writing, by video, by voice recording. So then it's really super easy to set up an activity. So it can take about 10 minutes at the most. So you sh those are the working tools that will, will enable that. And also do not follow trainings only for the contents. It's also for the containers. What is the container? So for example, when we speak of recycling here, this recycling idea comes or stems from a workshop that I saw about three weeks ago that was given by Julie Coulomb, a very good workshop. And she was giving this example for something else for the infamous steak corn potato from Therese in the show La Petite Vie. La Petite Vie, I know there are English speakers here right now, so steak, 
corn and potato from La Petite Vie, the uh, television show, Quebec French television show, very popular. Um, that is something that she would say. She would say it's something that we know that is very familiar, but think about it in a different way. So another example in the US TV shows, we can think about Kramer, when Kramer would go into Jerry's apartment or when Michael Scott and the office that always repeats, that's what she said. So it is something that is always based on the same frame, but will enable you to repeat it and reuse it. So you reuse the same frame, but then you change what is encompassed or within that frame. So that's what recycling is. And in the Little Life, La Petite Vie, Thérèse reinvented the shepherd pie many, many times. And we also see in uh, Kramer, when Kramer comes into the apartment, he always comes in in a hundred different ways and it's super hilarious. So that's how, that's what I mean, doing the same thing, but in a different way with the same content, a different content, but uh, the same framework. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the time. It is so difficult. I don't know. Um, anyway, I think it's so difficult to keep time. One day, someone told me that optimistic people had a hard time knowing how much time went by. I could tell you that I'm a really very optimistic person. So there you go. So was there anything in the chat box, Vanessa? Actually, many people wanted you to change or share some English tools that were created. And I said, we're going to include it in the toolkit, the participation toolkit. Is that OK? Yes, no problem. That toolkit is going to be popular and used. That's all I want. So we have about 10 to 20 minutes. OK, perfect. So we will go on, right? Collaboration. The more we are, the more fun we have. And the more we are, the more we can do and accomplish things. So what this encompasses is what? You have children? Use them. Sometimes they have incredible digital ideas. Either you could see what their teacher is doing with them or what games they're playing with. For example, my son was playing with, uh, at some point, like uh, kind of an Aladdin genie game. You could ask him questions. So he would always find the the animal or the person that you had in ta in head in your mind so that was really genius and i thought oh wow that could be extraordinary in terms of uh, learning french so those games are in french and english so it for second languages it could generate it makes sense for the children so the teacher already knows the answer and you use those games for the child to go through the learning process so now I have another idea. I disseminated this idea, idea to many, many people. I didn't get any feedback yet, but if you want to go into that, I'm going to put a link for that genie, abracadabra genie. I can't remember. It's going to be in the toolkit for you as well. So go out and get your social networks. You know, the... I listen to a lot of English TV, but the US sitcoms, I don't know them that well. So what I did, I did a call to all on my Facebook page to get the example I just gave you from Kramer. I've gotten a crazy number of examples. People were really into it. Into it. I also posted my question on a group that discusses TV shows. So here you go. I was so popular there. Everybody wanted to talk to me. I could have done a seminar just on the different ways sitcoms always use the same structure to bring about a new laugh, a new burst of laughter. So you think about using your social networks. 
Oh, we've just said that it's the genie is Akinator. Yes, exactly. That's it. Thank you. I won't have to look for it. I'm going to save some time here. You see, I threw the ball at you and you got the answer back. Thank you. So take the time to solicit your colleagues, okay? Because I know we all have inside of us a part of ourselves that says, I am the most wonderful person in the world. But the chances are there might be probably somebody else who already did what you were thinking about or has already done your crazy idea or your wonderful idea and maybe and I say even maybe that person is one of your colleagues so the more you talk about your ideas the more you want to collaborate the more wonderful it gets is it going to be exactly the way you wanted it to be maybe not but at least you'll have a foundation that's what's extraordinary and actually i'm going to post that up for you i'm going to include it in the participants toolkit i told you i would speak of it a lot but we have a wonderful project which is named teach us your way so here in french is the number 100 and it means uh, not in French as well so anyways it's many many ways that teachers use to teach different notions I'm not going to talk too much about this because we don't have enough time but if you have any ideas go and check that out the more we are to feed that website the better it's going to be so here you go for that so now if I go back to my collaboration and I click, 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 whoops, I clicked a little too much. So do not hesitate to, do not hesitate to solicitate your pedagogical, pedagogical counselor in your region uh Rissi, so recite so i'm gonna give you a link to all the recite portals and you can see according to your region or depending on your region who you need to address sometimes they have budget they can get you budget to get things sometimes you'll say okay i checked over here i don't know how to do this are they gonna say either hey i know how or i know how to get someone to help you and also i have budget for you so you know sometimes there are ways to get the means especially with the digital plans that we need to implement the it does have a certain level of value so don't hesitate to go and collaborate with your risky advisors indeed Martin every Friday uh, gives some help troubleshooting from 9 to 5 or from 9 to 11 every Friday you can talk to someone for troubleshooting in terms of uh, the RECI network you can go on the website and there is also a, a website that is given and yes I will include that as well in your toolkit so oh, now you have tricks to better collaborate and I think uh, Vanessa is going to put up the survey in the chat box. I would have liked to have the time at the end to get all of this and collect all this information and give you some, uh, some data, but we don't have enough time. So let's move on. Delegate. Delegate, you know, is the hardest thing to do. If, if you're just a little bit of a perfectionist, it's hard to do, but it generates so many projects and so many things. And often you can go in a direction where you never even thought of. You know, sometime, sometimes it's fun to initiate a project from, the, from scratch, but sometimes what's even better is to have the project in front of us and say, oh, maybe I could change it up. I would have done it a little bit differently. And in the end, you have two new projects and you can delegate these two ways of doing the same project to your students and tell them to choose which way they want to do it. So to have someone else do the work can be something extraordinary. Also, let your students help you as well. That is something that we don't always think of because we're under the impression that 
you know, ex especially with the digital, depending on our skills, we feel more or so comfortable. So in the end, we have a tendency to tell our students, like, are you able to do something with that? Do you have any ideas? Well, that ex is extraordinary for their self value. And we learn things at the same time. At the same time, I remember when I used to work at the time, uh, we didn't, we were not allowed to use Facebook and the students were the ones that showed me how to hack the system and go and use Facebook anyhow, even if we weren't allowed to do that. So another thing, Eugénie Lamoureux also went a little bit further. Remember, it's a digipad, a digital pad. What she did, or what actually she is doing, and this is just one of the examples that she used for English 5101, is that as soon as she has a student that is having trouble accomplishing the task that she has requested from him, the first thing she does is she asks him, you, if you had a, to do this, what? how would you go about this? So she'll go on the computer with him and do it or if he's uh, skillful enough he can go on the computer and do and elaborate his way of doing things so this way you end up with many ways of doing the same thing so i'll send that out to you At, in the beginning that's the way she would present things to her students and then the students worked on the base model and fixed it up and it came all the way to this which is really not the same thing at all, but it's based on the same principle. For some students, this is a lot more simple to work with. So to give them the opportunity to do that, to switch things up a little bit. And even better, imagine the student, he knows that even two or three years down the line, Jani is still using his model that he created. So he feels like he's participating in something even bigger. In general, the students that we have will not necessarily be the ones that come forth in the learning process. So imagine how proud they could be if we're using the same material after, years after they've created it. So that is a good idea. You solicit your students. Uh, Julie, I don't want to bother you. I just want to tell you we have about eight minutes left. Oh, well, listen, we're on track. We're riding this way. We're okay here. Okay. It's epic, but uh, we're more like in a marathon here. We're more in a, in a sprint rather than a marathon here. So conclusion, I should have enough of eight minutes to do my conclusion. So start with a smile. Okay, it's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay if you still have things to learn. It's okay, you know, unless you really have committed a very important mistake, we do agree to say that it it's possible that what you have created with less time without taking enough uh, red, um, enough of a step back to look at what you're doing, it's possible that it's not perfect. So if the material is not perfect and the student gets that material, what do you think is going to happen? Either he's not going to understand or either he won't be able to accomplish the task you requested from him. So in either case, you will try to look over the material that you've been trying to teach him and see with the student what you could do or what modifications you can bring about to make it more easy to understand. And it really doesn't, it really is not a big deal if it's not perfect the same time. So you need to give yourself permission to make mistakes. With the indigen indigenous communities, we see it a lot more where they have a project which will be very holistic, very interdisciplinary. And then we give them the information, we model things up, they do it, we look at them do it. And we don't tell them that they're heading for a, a big fail, but then at some point they realize that it doesn't work. And then they wonder, okay, how come? So they have the reflex to go out and ask questions and see how they should do it and what, what way to go about it. And I can guarantee you that 
the next time around, they remember how to do it and they're not going to make the same mistakes. So you need to take that into account. Developing skills will always be through the path of making mistakes. And if someone tells you that's not okay, tell them Julie Boursier told you it was okay, okay? And now we didn't have the time to chat and discuss. I would have loved having a chat with the French and the English sectors. But what I did is I decided to suggest to you a discussion that we could have in the month of February, because I thought maybe there are a few things that I talked about today that you have tried, and you'll want to discuss those things at that time. So in English, it would be from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. In French, from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. One does not exclude the other. You could assist to both. Because anyhow, we won't be having the same exact discussion in both sessions. So there will be differences. So if you are bilingual, you are invited to both. So we're speaking of February. We, we need to agree that February is pretty far off. So in the meantime, Vanessa is going to post a link for a survey. And all we need is your email address. And I will be using that email address only for that, I promise. I will say a little hello just before the holidays. And then after the holidays, just before the event. So you, as a reminder to the event. So there you go. Next, a big thank you, right? And here you see there is a form that you could please fill out for the assessment or the ev evaluation process. It's completely anonymous, so don't worry. If you want to throw tomatoes at us, you can do it. But all I ask of you is be a little bit creative, okay? Be creative. Do it with some some skills so at least it's not too um, saddening for us so i um, hope you enjoyed today's presentation i love being with you today and i'm really expecting that in terms of the length there will be a lot of complaints i feel that one hour was not enough with you so this is a form you can fill out vanessa will add that on too and it's also included in the what is it? If everyone could open up their mics, I used to do that with my students. It's included in the toolkit. So now that you've listened to me for an hour, why don't you go and get the badge for it? So we will close on this slide where you will find also in your toolkit. Hey, I'm not so bad. I was a little bit speedy Gonzalez today, so we still, but we still, we have three minutes for questions. So there you go. <laughs> and also I would like to say thank you to Vanessa for your precious help. It's good when we are hosting and animating and we don't have to worry about anything else but what is coming out of our mouths. And also we worry about the people that are here, of course, but at least we know we have good technical support. So thank you so much to everyone for coming here at the end of day like this. It's greatly appreciated. I hope I'll see you again at the February discussion. I can't wait to read your comments, send them to me. It, it can be done in one week, two weeks, one year, two years. The link will still remain. So keep it in your favorites tab and keep this form and just send those comments out to me. It'll be a pleasure. Have a good weekend.